You're listening to the Dixon Hughes Goodman Halftime Show. Certified public accountants and advisors throughout the South and proud to support the Catamount Sports Network. Fans, welcome back to Whitmire Stadium. Jeff Bryson here in the broadcast booth. Our score at halftime, Furman 12 and the Catamount 7. Right now, let's pause for 10 seconds for station ID on this broadcast of Western Carolina University football. is CSN. Fans, don't forget the Catamount football team will travel to Appalachian State next Saturday to take on the Mountaineers in what could be the final battle for the Old Mountain Jug. We'll be on the air at 2.30 next Saturday afternoon with the Pepsi Tailgate Show as we preview the Catamounts and the Mountaineers showdown. The kickoff from Boom will be at 3.30 next Saturday right here on the Catamount Sports Network. Now it's time to check in with Steve White, who has a special look back at that 1983 Catamount football team. Steve, take it away. Earlier today, most of the players and all of the assistant coaches from our 1983 football team met to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Western Carolina's incredible run to the NCAA 1AA championship game. I've been associated with Catamount football for 52 years and the exciting seasons of several nationally ranked teams that are etched in my memory. Among those are the 69 season, which produced our first nationally ranked team, followed closely by the 72 team that rose as high as number three nationally, and the 74 season that produced our first NCAA playoff team. I also vividly remember the 1984 team that barely missed the playoffs, as well as the 92 team that was narrowly denied a playoff bid despite beating eventual national champion Marshall that season. However, one season remains at the top of my list, the 1983 season. The 83 team made more comebacks than Elvis, Michael Jordan, Brett Favre, and Muhammad Ali combined. The season started with a thud as the Catamounts were routed by Clemson and then were shut out at Wake Forest for the first time in seven seasons, despite driving the ball inside Wake's 25-yard line four times. That 0-2 start started looking an awful lot like 0-3 when East Tennessee State held a 10-point lead with less than three minutes to play. But the Catamounts scored on a bizarre pass play, then made a two-point conversion, got the ball back on an onside kick, and won the game with 32 seconds to play on a field goal. That win ignited an undefeated streak of nine regular season games that landed the Catamounts a spot in the 12-team NCAA 1AA playoff. Even though WCU and Furman both went undefeated in Southern Conference play, they had fought to a 17-17 tie in a midseason game. Furman was awarded the automatic bid to the playoff because of one more win as the conference at that time played an unbalanced schedule, and the Catamounts got in by the skin of their teeth on an at-large bid. Then the miracle started happening. In the first round of the playoffs, Colgate took a 23-0 lead only 28 minutes into the game before the Cats began arguably the greatest comeback in WCU football history that netted a 24-23 win. The next Saturday, in Worcester, Massachusetts, Western came from behind twice in the second half and then held off a furious rally by Holy Cross to win a quarterfinals matchup 28-21. That set up a much-anticipated rematch with Furman in the semifinal round down in Greenville, South Carolina, in what was also being billed as the true Southern Conference championship game. Over 5,000 WCU fans converged on Greenville, and CBS TV was there to broadcast the game to more than half the nation. The Catamounts defense held Furman's number one ranked running game to just 18 yards, which keyed a 14-7 upset win and sent WCU into the national championship game in Charleston against number one ranked Southern Illinois. Western's fans even tore down the goalpost in the Paladin Stadium in celebration that is unparalleled in WCU history. The miracles and dreams turned into nightmares the next Saturday in Charleston as Southern Illinois ended the emotionally drained Catamount's non-losing streak at 12 straight games to claim the national championship before a nationwide ABC TV audience. The 83 Catamounts became the first Southern Conference team to reach the NCAA championship game and was the first NCAA football team to play 15 games in a season. Six of those Catamounts went on to play in the NFL. Seven were named All-America. 
18 were named all Southern Conference. A win over Furman today would not put the 2013 Catamounts in the playoffs, but it could be the start to a return to a season like the one that many of us witnessed back in 1983. All right, thanks a lot, Steve White. Our score here at the half is Furman 12 and the Catamount 7. Fans, stay tuned. Coming up next here on the Dixon Hughes Goodman Halftime Show, we'll be joined by the Director of Media Relations at Furman. Hunter Reed will be along. We'll have it up next as you are listening to Catamount Football right here on the Catamount Sports Network. Carolina West Sports Medicine at Harris Regional Hospital is honored to care for the community's athletes. Whether it's the high school or college level, we always bring our A game. Our physicians, trainers, and therapists are on the sidelines, on the field, and in the weight room, making sure your season is safe and successful. Call 586-7394 for information or visit MedWestHealth.org. Discover a private high elevation community unlike any you've ever seen before. Balsam Mountain Preserve. Located just 38 miles from Asheville between Waynesville and Silva, Balsam Mountain Preserve is a community within a park. 75% of its 4,400 acres is protected from development, providing residents with a setting that will never be duplicated. Call 866-452-3456 or visit our website at balsammountain.com. Balsam Mountain Preserve. Life at a higher level. Game day is upon us when hopeful throngs of couch-bound conquistadors band together for the agony and ecstasy of football fandom. When the palate-pleasing pleasure of wings, burgers, and bratwurst is eclipsed only by the sweet taste of victory. So find your lucky seat on the sofa, and remember, you make a better door than a window. Ingalls, your official sponsor of food and football. If you're tailgating before the Catamounts take the field or listening to the game at home, Zaxby's in Silva has the perfect meal for you. Pick up our tailgate special, 20 chicken fingers, two large fries, a basket of Texas toast, a Zappetizer, and six cookies for only $20. See you at Zaxby's in Silva, located at 284 East Main Street. Zaxby's, the official chicken of college sports. You're listening to the Dixon Hughes Goodman Halftime Show. Certified public accountants and advisors throughout the South and proud to support the Catamount Sports Network. Here's Jeff Bryson. Fans, welcome back to Cullowee at halftime. It's Furman 12, the Catamount 7. I want to remind you to like our new Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and search Catamount Sports Network. You can see photos and send us your comments on Facebook. Right now, let's send it back over to Steve White, who's standing by with our special guest here at halftime, the Director of Media Relations at Furman, Hunter Reed. Steve? We go back a long ways, Hunter, uh, Reed and I, back into the mid-'80s when he came to Furman University. I was actually still working at the time here at Western Carolina. Uh, back then we called him Sports Information Director, and I think that's what Hunter still calls his title and so forth. But, uh, again, one of my real good friends. Uh, again, back when uh, Sports Information guys did – a lot of things that are not written down in the books. <laughs> that's, that's right, concerned. pre pre-internet too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and uh, pre-computers that's and right. all that's this right. type of stuff. But uh, uh, Hunter, uh, a lot going on down at Furman right now besides uh, your football program coming back here after a slow start this season. And uh, you're getting ready to maybe enhance that a little bit more. Uh, I was When we were back down there last year in basketball season, there was, it was just a mess in your football stadium. But uh, you're building a new complex there, new football operations, uh, Heritage Hall, new press box. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. I know this means a lot, and this is what we've got on the drawing boards here at Western now. I don't know how long we are away from executing our plan, but you'll be in yours. Will it be before the – I don't think it will be before the season's well, over. That's right. December 15th, I think, Steve, is – the date uh, they'll turn the keys over to us to the new Pierce Horton football complex. It's about a 45,000 square foot complex built where the old press box was, but it'll be the, the, the centerpiece of our football program. The offices, locker room will be over there, and we've also got a club level and a press box, new brand new press box that we've been in this year since the second game of the season. But as you know, you've been around in collegiate athletics a long time. You know what a difference 
new facilities can make in terms of just lifting enthusiasm and really giving your program a spark. And you know, if any, if two schools can relate to having older press boxes that yeah. needed to be replaced, it's Western Carolina and Furman. And and lucky to say that we have that now. And we, Furman just did a tremendous job. I think it's going to be a real difference making maker for us going forward as far as recruiting. And we've got brand new field turf now. We finally pulled up the old natural grass that, that, that I like, a lot of people like. But the new stuff, as you know, it's not like the old Astro turf that you and I used to think was concrete with carpet on top of it. This, this stuff these kids play on there is really tremendous, and we're excited about that. Yeah, I remember when Appalachian State got theirs. In fact, we got ours back here in 1974, and after about five or six years, you like playing out in the parking lot. <laughs> that, that's right. But, again, you're talking about what that means as far as recruiting. You got like we had 80-some people here today, uh, potential recruits coming in and looking at our facilities. And then you go to what Appalachian State's got going, Georgia Southern's got going down there, Furman now, uh, you know, even Wofford's facilities of uh, – with Jerry Richardson's money, uh, all of these facilities, a lot of new things going up, and uh, what that means when it, uh, the, the, as they call it, the bling, the bling, and it does mean a lot. Uh, it do, times it, have changed. Absolutely, and I mean, you, we have to remember sometimes, you know, you and I might be fine with an older facility, but we're not being recruited. 18-year-olds, okay. they're impressed by new facilities because it screams commitment to the program by the university. Yeah, and, and again, and like it uplifts everything, I'm sure, about that and everything like that. Talking quickly about your, your firm and ball club here now. We see this today. They're, like I say, everybody's offense sort of stagnant right now, but quite a turnaround from early in the season. Well, it, it, they have come together, playing together better as, as a unit. I think we're a little bit tougher getting some a little bit of that back, and we've needed that. But we're very pedestrian on offense, as yeah. you've seen. Just kind of struggle sometime to put it in the end zone and maybe hope the defense can hold on. So. And just don't make mistakes and make the other team make mistakes. That seems like it's the formula right it's, now. It's okay. Hunter Reed, appreciate you stopping by and uh, updating us on what's going on down at Furman University. Steve, Thank always you. a pleasure to see you. Thank you, buddy. All right, thanks a lot, Steve White. And also, again, a special thanks to Hunter Reed for joining us here at halftime from Furman University. Fans, stay tuned. More of the Dixon Hughes Goodman Halftime Show is coming up next. We'll set the stage for the second half of today's game as Furman leads it here at the break. 12 to 7, the second half kickoff is straight ahead after this local commercial break. You are listening to Catamount Football.
listening to the Dixon Hughes Goodman Halftime Show. Certified public accountants and advisors throughout the South and proud to support the Catamount Sports Network. Fans, welcome back. It's been a great first half. 12-7 from another lead here on the Battle for Purple Supremacy. We like to call it Throwback Uniform Day. The 1983 team is back and all the coaches and Steve, it's senior day and it's just a great, great ball game. Great halftime show. And I got a, I got a, uh, uh, a bone to pick. Yes. A, a lot of people get up and leave at halftime. This football team at Western Carolina University deserves better than that. Yeah, this is still a very much a ball game, a 12 to 7 ball game. What are you going to do? Right. I mean, this is this team deserves your support right now. They've hung in there in the you first half. It. We can get any offense going at all here in the second half. I think we can really make some make some things happen here at the end of this contest. But uh, uh, again, right. a quick turn, Gary, over here to basketball. Uh, last night, a tough loss up at Virginia Tech. Uh, probably shot as bad as you can possibly shoot. Yep. Uh, playing at Liberty tonight, a, a big game. They need to come back and uh, bounce back because they're going to be on the road for several games. We'll talk more about basketball as we move along. Here we go. And the kickoff by Sigmund going to be high angled toward the sideline, going to be taken at the 23-yard line. Furman back out across the 30, 35, out to the 39-yard line. But again, a short kick giving Furman very good field position. And that's Hank McLeod, their best running back on the kickoff return, Steve. Yeah. So again, Furman, very good field position. Yeah, freshman Fred, Fred Payne coming up to make that tackle there, one of the bukus of uh, freshmen on this uh, team. <laughs> As we mentioned, seven freshmen or sophomores yeah. start on defense. Good field position here for Furman to open the second half at the 40-yard line. They're on 40. First down and 10. This time they're going to start with Reese Hanna and the sophomore at quarterback as they line them up in that old traditional eye formation. You don't see it much anymore, but it works for Furman. Hannon back to throw, fires, swings it out to the left yep. side, and their oh. running back just drops the ball. Incomplete. Close to a fumble there, Gary, but not yeah. quite. You talk about Furman, you know, traditional live. Again, their uniforms haven't changed uh, hardly a lick over the years. <laughs> uh, the coaching staff, they're all Furman products. Uh, Bruce Fowler was, was there for years as an assistant. Uh, they just keep recycling those Furman guys and change very little. And uh, I tell you, it, it keeps working, doesn't they, it? They block and tackle. That's, That's right. And, hey, those are the two primary rules in football, block yeah. and tackle. Second down and 10 for the Paladins, who are 4-2 and two in Southern Conference play, 5-5 five and five overall. The handoff is going to be McLeod bouncing oh. off a tackle out to the 44 for a four-yard gain. Coming up over there is going to be Bryson Jordan and Sir Tonius Harris on the stop. Yeah. Kevin Ume had him at the line of scrimmage, but he just got away uh, for no gain. But uh, – Turn something into nothing there. That's a, that's a sign of a good back. Picked up four, though. Talking about that, Greg McClam sent us a little feed at halftime. One of our defensive ends, John Macbeth, might not come back in the second yeah. half. He has a head injury. Boy, he had a couple of big plays there in the first half. Big possession right here. Big situation for the Catamount defense. Third down and six from it at the 44. Three wides. Catamount's rushing four. Nobody blitzing. They swing it out to McLeod out of the backfield, and he has the first down across the 40-yard line before he's upended by our junior, Christian Gill. That time when you uh, run that, uh, that type of defensive formation, you've got to get to the quarterback or there's somebody going to be wide open on either the right or the left-hand side of the field, and that's what happened. We just did their offensive line. I'm impressed with the protection they're giving their quarterback. And I tell you what, a young offensive line, Steve, they only have one senior. Of course, that's their All-American, Dakota Dozier, 6'5", 300-pounder. All-American, All-Southern Conference, obviously, and probably going to be uh, playing for pay yeah. next year on Sunday. Third time they've converted to third down today. Now first down and 10, Furman, three wides. Again, Hannon in at quarterback. Catamount showing blitz. Now they back off as the corners come back. Catamount's rushing four, 4-3 four, set up. 13 and a half to play in the third quarter. Hannon back to throw. Down the middle. Got a man. He's got a step, and he drops the oh ball. Oh, my goodness. Jordan Snelling's number one had a step on Trey Morgan, Morgan and he just dropped a six-point touchdown. He did a little juke step oh. at about the 15-yard line, and Trey <laughs> went one way, and he went the other, and he was wide open. And Snellings just kind of puts his head in his hands. He knows as he comes to the sideline, he dropped their first touchdown of the night. And he is their best receiver, too. Yeah, wow. He's a good one. 13 catches, 129 yards, and one touchdown. He would have had number two on that one. Now second down and 10. Boy, the Catamounts dodge a bullet there as they had six in their pocket, and the pocket had a hole in it. This time they stack them two on the left side. 
An offset eye on the backfield for Hannon as he turns and hands off. It's going to be McLeod right up the middle, and he gets six yards out to the 42-yard line of Western Carolina territory. And uh, Cortland Carson uh, coming up with the hit after first contact uh, in there by big number 91, Brian Johnson. Well, we're going to miss Cortland, Steve. He's one of our seniors oh. on senior day, and he is our leading tackler. Well, he has had a heck of a year. He's, he's had an all-conference season. He really has. 91 tackles to lead the team, four and a half tackles for losses, two and a half sacks. Our senior, Cortland Carson. He and Petey yeah. Bothrop, the only seniors starting on defense today. This will be the 13th time they faced a th uh, third down conversion, and uh, they've got six already. Third down now. Cut him out showing blitz. Christian Gill jumping in there. Now here he comes on the blitz. Yeah, Hannon back to throw. Fires over the middle. This time he has his man for a first down at the 30. Ryan Culbreth on the on the catch and Ace Clark on the tackle. Again, just all day to look over the field. That was his, at least his secondary receiver there, Gary. Uh, he just has time to overlook the field, maybe look at three different patterns. And, again, that offensive line doing a great job of protecting him. I tell you, Jaleel Urquick got up limping. He's going to stay out there on the field, looks like. But he was limping when he got up, yeah. got up after that tackle. We hope he's going to be okay. 13-yard gain on that play. Another big third down. For that's two in this drive. First down and 10 now Furman at the 30-yard line. They have yet to score a touchdown today. They have four field goals for a 12-7 lead over the Catamounts. This time, Hannon. Is going to run it to the right side himself. No, it's going to be Hayes. Hayes down to the 25-yard line, a five-yard gain. And, Steve, they run quarterbacks in on every play. Yeah. Again, <laughs> uh, when, when Hayes is in the game, they're going to run the ball. Yeah, That's very right. obvious, very yeah. obvious. As we mentioned, he's passed only twice all year, once today. And it was not pretty. Second down and five. We'll check in with Greg McClam in just a moment to see if he has any other updates from his halftime uh Research down there on the sideline, our Zaxby sideline man, Greg McClam. 11.35 to play, third quarter. This time the Paladin second and five at hour 25. Twins on the left side and Twins in there where the quarterback is now. It's going to be Hayes. He's going to run it again to the left side, and it gets three more down to the 22-yard line. But, Greg, did you find out any more developments during halftime? Well, guys, I can tell you Macbeth is out for the game. Uh, Christian Gill, as you guys have already seen, is back. And one thing that was mentioned is the fact that we have to get defensive pressure by the front four on third down. That was a key thing the defense talked about. We're not getting it right now. Here's another third down situation, guys. They're two for two in this drive, which started back at their own 40-yard line. Third down and two now. Here in Colorway, USA, senior day, the final home game of the season. Great crowd until halftime. This time it's going to be... Hayes, hands off, it's going to be McLeod. Big hole on the left side, down to the 10, down to the 5, all the way to the two-yard line. And that is the man with a plan, Hank McLeod, almost 900 yards rushing. And Steve, he just rumbled over there on the left side and found plenty of room to run. Broke at least two open tackles there, wide open tackles. He just uh, ran through people all the way to the 3, they're going to call it now. Yes. Cortland Carson is down. He's one of those guys that yeah. he ran into, and he is down yeah, this on is, the ground. This is not good right here. Our leading tackler is down with 10.41 to play here in the third quarter. But again, Steve, it is so good to have all our seniors recognized today and all the guys from that 1983 team who came back to Cullowhee to make it a special day. Oh, it really was. And uh, they just, uh, I think they were really appreciative. And uh, was a, we had a nice program for them over in the on the Ram Ramsey Center arena floor. Uh, had the old uh, uniform out there on a, a mannequin to, to show them what it looked like. And <laughs> they were amazed how close it was to what they wore back in 1983. A lot of mo momentum, a little prizes for them, and uh, uh, a good program. A lot of video from the 83 season. It was a, just a good time was had by all, and a nice tailgate party for them after that uh, before the game. And, Steve, I really think as you look around the Southern Conference over all these years, especially with current members, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, it amazes me how many NFL players came off that one team. Oh, yeah. And you look at Furman. Furman had, what, three or four kids that came off of that 83 team. Uh, uh, Stanford Jennings had a great career with the Cincinnati Bengals. They, yeah. uh, their quarterback went to the NFL. Uh, uh, again, six guys actually played off of that 83 team, uh, played multiple seasons. Uh, it, it was amazing. You, you are right. It, and, it really was. I mean, we've never had that before no, or since. No. And, not even close. And not even close. You're you're correct. And, you know, one time we had more guys active in the NFL than anybody in the Southern Conference, and one time we had more 
uh, players that had signed over like a 10-year period than anybody in the Southern Conference. It was it was a glorious yeah. stretch. Well, right now we got to uh, buckle down here and keep them out of the end zone. We cannot let this momentum shift. Now it's going to be Hannon uh, back in at quarterback right now. First down, they run the I formation again. And they're going to have McLeod, the deep man in the I formation. The fullback gets the call, though. He runs to the left side, and he has the touchdown. Ernie Kane, the fullback, the redshirt sophomore, the first touchdown of the day for the Furman Paladins with 10.25 to play in the third quarter. Now that was just too easy, Gary. Yeah. And again, that is the... That is what they do, Steve, and they do it very well out of the plain old eye formation. And that blocking, that offensive line, uh, not that we were doing anything that bad defensively. It's just that uh, this is an accomplished uh, offensive line. They've always had great offensive linemen. And they do it very well. And only one senior on that offensive line. Everybody else will be back. The kick is up and good for the PAT as Early makes it now 19-7. to Furman over the Catamounts with 10.25 to play in the third quarter. Lots of football still left. Keep it right here on the Catamount Sports Network. Hi, folks. Scotty Wells here with Andy Shaw Ford. And on behalf of Andy Shaw Ford, I would like to wish the Western Carolina University Catamount football team the best of luck this year. As with any organization, the community is the backbone of success. Just like here at Andy Shaw Ford, our success has been brought about by this wonderful community. So please join all of us at Andy Shaw Ford by making Friday's Catamount Purple Day by wearing Western team colors. Good luck, cats. Your community is behind you all the way. Looking for a great place to stay while enjoying Western Carolina Catamount games? Check us out at the Holiday Inn Express Dillsboro. Newly renovated and just minutes from WCU, lodging at the Holiday Inn Express Dillsboro transforms an ordinary visit into an unforgettable vacation. With a convenient location, it's easy to explore the nearby Blue Ridge Parkway and Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Make your reservation online at hiexpress.com or call 1-800-HOLIDAY. This is CSN. Welcome back to Colorway USA on Senior Day as the Furman Paladins bang it in, Steve, in a very impressive drive. 10, 10 plays, 60 yards, uh, 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Now the kickoff is going to be taken in the end zone. No return in there wisely as uh, hitting a knee is going to be Sean Warren and Steve. We'll have it first down and 10, and hopefully our offense can make some adjustments at halftime and, and come out and get us right back in this ballgame. Again, that defense was on the field a lot in the first half, and uh, that was just a methodical, well-engineered, uh, well-oiled, greased, whatever you want to call it, drive by Furman that time. Ten plays, 60 yards, mixing up the run in the pass. Ernie Kane going in for three yards to give Furman that 19-7 lead. And starting the first drive offensively of the second half is going to be Eddie Sullivan, who led us to our only touchdown drive of the day as he hands off to the right side. And a nice run out there. Darius Ramsey still going all the way to the 49-yard line. One of our better runs of the day yeah. from the line of scrimmage. Carrying the football over there is going to be Darius Ramsey. That was by far our best run of the day. The previous was 14 yards by Ramsey, and this time he goes all the way from the 25, make it a 24-yard run, 24-yard run on that one. To the 49-yard line, first down and 10. Catamounts just a basic sweep to the right side and a nice play execution. This time the Catamounts have three wide to the left side for Eddie Sullivan. He wants to throw to the right side, has his man, and that's going to be Terry and Robinson knocked out of bounds, but it's at the Furman 43-yard line. Nice game. Interesting, uh, Canaris Benson has not been the target or has not, uh, I haven't seen him on the field lately. Yeah, I see him now. Yeah, yeah. He's down there, but Steve, not one pass reception today, and yep. he is the leading receiver in the conference. Maybe that's uh, something that they're concentrating on and we don't know about. Canoris Benson, 44 catches, 746 yards on the season. Again, number one in the SOCON. And this time, the Furman Paladin defense stops us at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that uh, Darius Ramsey trying to go over the top with that one is going to be maybe, uh, maybe a yard short, less than a yard short. So now it's going to bring up third down and a yard yep. from the 42-yard line. Cats have failed to convert a third down situation all the entire game. 0 for 6. We have got to, we've got to erase that zero right here. 9-10 to play, third quarter. Furman up 19-7. Sullivan looks to the sideline along with Darius Ramsey, the running back to his right. Catamounts have twins on the right side. Got a tight end to the left side. Hands off to Ramsey. No, no. Uh, he didn't get it. No, not even close. And the Furman Paladin defense is alive and well. Uh, Jordan Hawkins, one of the defensive tackles, leading the charge in there. 
That, fourth uh, down. Not, not very creative right there, Gary. Uh, and obviously we're going to go for it, kind of a four-down territory situation yeah. here. Oh, yeah, I would. I don't think yep. anything. We're down 19-7, you know, 11th game of the season. Why not? That's right. Line them up. This Guys, time. not to second guess anybody, but if we we're going to go forward on fourth, why don't we take a shot on third? I don't, I don't <laughs> That's the big question. Now, the handoff. Ramsey down the right side to the 30, 25, 20, to the 15, to the 10. Ramsey, oh, at the five-yard line. They finally caught him. But what a good run for the Catamounts. Not only the first down, but a whole lot more. Well, we go from being ultra conservative to open it up. And, uh, wow, it paid off, Gary. Uh, this is going to be about a 40-yard gain. It is a 40-yard gain for Darius Ramsey. What a play. And, Steve, that was just good blocking and good running behind the blocks by Ramsey. This time Sullivan hands off to the right side. Here comes Ramsey again. This time he stopped at the four for basically no gain. It's going to bring up second down and goal from the four-yard line. Again, Jake Thornton uh, pull blocking on that play before did a nice job. And that time the same, almost the same play uh, that time just from a little different angle. So now the Catamounts knocking on the door. A touchdown here would really spice things oh, up. Oh, my goodness, yes. It's almost a must. Plenty of time on the play clock as the Catamounts get the offense set. Got a wing on the left side. This time Sullivan looks back to the sideline. Yeah. The wing over there is London Richardson. Yeah, that, that, that he is like your wing back blocker like uh, Georgia Southern uses. Let's see if they come in his direction. And we're going to try to run that way. No, Sullivan cuts back no. the other way, but Furman shut us down. Well, they blew up the play. It was a high snap almost over his head, and he would never, by the time he got the ball down and regained his feet, the play was over. And again, Jordan Hawkins, the defensive tackle, the freshman comes in and uh, knocks it down. Yeah. So now it's third and goal now from yes. the five-yard line. Terrible time to have a bad snap in that situation. Of course, I know we're on our third center in here, Hunter Kirby. So now Sullivan lining him up in the pistol. Got it back behind him. That's going to be Sean Warren, kind of the deep man back there. He fires left side of the end zone. Benson is yeah. there, but he's covered very well. Pass incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down. Again, another high snap. Sort of throw the timing off, Gary. And I, I, there, we're going for the field goal, but eh, whatever. Yeah. Well, I tell you, but Canoris Benson not even close to being open. Yeah. Covered well over there by right quarterback Reggie Thomas. And now we're going to try for three. Yeah. Which would make it a 19 to 10 ball game. At least get something out of this drive. Richard Sigmund, who is 8 of 11 on field goals, a chip shot. This will be a 21, almost a 22 yard effort from the right hash. They get the snap down, the hold is down, and the kick is good. So the Catamounts get some points out of this one with 6.48 to play with a great running of Darius Ramsey leading the drive. 19 10, Furman in the lead. We'll take a local break as you're listening to Catamount football. is CSN. Fans, welcome back to Cullowee. Jeff Bryson here reminding you, for all of our younger Catamount fans, be sure to join the Catamount Kids Club. It's built by Western Builders. The Catamount Kids Club is an exclusive club for the youngest Catamount fans. Kids 12 and under can experience all the excitement of WCU athletics, get involved with student athletes, attend sporting events, and be interactive with other Catamount fans. Membership is only $20 for the entire year. Register by going to catamountsports.com or by giving us a call at 1-800-34-GO-WCU. The Catamount Kids Club is built by Western Builders. Hi to KC Culler, emailing from Salisbury, North Carolina, and also Diane and Frank Leonard listening today in Hayesville, North Carolina. You can email us at catamountsports at hotmail.com. 
6.48 to go, third quarter. It's Furman 19 and the Catamounts 10. Here's Gary Ayers and Steve White. You know, two guys you can depend on listening to the Catamounts, Steve. Casey Culler and Danny Hurt. Yeah, that's right, and Frank Leonard, too. <laughs> uh, a nine-play, 70-yard drive for the Catamounts. Just came up three yards short. You're exactly right. Nice running by Darius Ramsey. Now from the 12-yard line, the Paladins on the return. Back out across the 25. It's going to be Tony Caldwell and a nice run back to the 35-yard lines. But, Steve, again, Darius Ramsey, yeah. he was the driving force on that drive. Yeah, he's got up now 96 yards in that drive. Had a 24 and a 40-yard run in that drive, Gary. But, again, they're getting great field position on their kick returns. We're getting zero. You're right. Nothing. They're up to the 35-yard line. So now, who's going to come in at quarterback? They run him back and forth. Reese Hannon is going to be coming back in now for uh, the Furman Paladins. Again, they, uh, uh, they've they been using a lot of different quarterbacks, yep. especially Hannon and Hayes on the day. Yep. This, Hannon's usually the thrower, and Hayes is the runner. You said it. This time, they have play action. They fake to the tailback. Oh, yeah. Down the field, it's a battle, and it's too far down the field. Down there was Snellings again, but Steve, good coverage by Christian Gill, and also back there was Trey Morgan. But boy, it makes it so Ooh. tough when, when he has all of that time to throw and can <laughs> overlook, and somebody eventually is going to get open. And that was just straight one-on-one, -on -one. but Hannon has got all day to look over the field. Now they're going to bring Hayes back in. So, again, they, they flip from uh, not series to series. They flip quarterbacks from play to play. Yeah, and just uh, mixing it up. And you got to think right here that he's going to run the ball in this situation or hand it off at, at yep. least. Hayes, as we mentioned, is the running quarterback, and he runs it just about every time. And this time he's going to hand off to McLeod around the left side. But there to chase him out of bounds is going to be Christian Gill. Good play by Christian Steve to hold him for a two-yard gain. Uh, Exactly right. But that last drive, Gary, nine plays, 70 yards for the Catamounts, eight up three minutes and 37 seconds. Richard Sigmund culminating uh, that drive with a 22-yard field goal. We'd love to have had We had it down to the three. Should have got a TD out of that one. Third down now. But Furman has had that ability yep. to convert the third downs today, Steve. Eight of 15, Gary, better than 50%. That's eight of 15. Western, meanwhile, 0 for 8. That is a huge difference in this ball game. If you're over 50%, that's a good conversion rate on third down. 5.50 to play. Furman leads 19 to 10. Third down. They need seven. Back in the shotgun is going to be Hannon. Looks to his left, swings it out, and there's a big oh. tackle by Cortland Carson to stop him for no yeah. gain. We think he's out of the ball game, and he comes back in and makes a big stop. What it's, a stop. you got to have him in that defense. I'd say a good open field tackle, Steve, because if he hadn't tackled him, he probably would have got the first down. That's right. So we forced them to punt for only the third time today, averaging about 40 yards a punt now, Ray Early, who does it all. He's a great kickoff man, obviously four field goals today, and uh, he can hang them up there punting. He averages almost 44 yards a punt. Back deep is going to be Garrett Brown, whose brother had a tough night last night. Irwin knocked out of the playoffs in double overtime over in Buckham County. Now the Garrett Brown on the return. Nice job out to the 30. Still dancing out to the 32-yard line is Garrett Brown, one of our better punt returns of the year. Yeah, it looked like he could qualify for Monday night. Uh, what is that thing they have on Monday night? <laughs> dancing, dancing with, with the, the stars. stars. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was doing it. Talk about punters. Boy, you go back to the guy we had here today. Steve Kanigi from that 83 team was All-American in uh, 84. 83 team. He averaged like 44. He averaged over 45 yards as a punter and was a first team All American for the Catamount. So, and Dean Biasucci wow. is probably as good as there is. A guy went on the NFL career as a place kicker. Boy, I tell you, kicking is huge. And we had a, we had a great run of kickers at that time. Then Kirk Roach comes along. Yes, indeed. I tell you, they are a, a vital part of any winning football program. Here comes Eddie Sullivan running, now throwing. Got his man out of the backfield, and it's going to be complete out there out to the 45-yard line. Good catch brother. and run to his brother, and uh, nice job. Night, John Sullivan making, uh, I think that's his fifth catch of the season. Touchdown last week and a big catch earlier in the ball game. So two catches today for John yep. Sullivan, four catches on the year. Sullivan, 14 on that one. On that Sullivan catch. to Sullivan. Two 14-yard catches, both of them 14. First down now, Catamounts at the 45-yard line. Three wides to the right side. Sullivan throws timing pattern left side and getting it down the sideline, going all the way in. Touchdown to Kenoris Benson, his first catch of the day. 45-yard, make that a, excuse me, a 55-yard pass play. Eddie Sullivan to Kenoris Benson. We've been looking for it. We've been talking about it. It finally happened. Steve, he called for it in the first half. Yeah. 
Well, he was open down the left sideline. We finally got the ball to the leading receiver in the Southern Conference and obviously for the Catamounts, number 14. Wow. All we can say is it's about Boy, time. Boy, did we need that. <laughs> we need it badly. Now for the point after is going to be Richard Sigmund. This is big right here because of it being a three-point ball game. You said it. PAT is up, and it's going to be good. And now it's a two-point ball game with 4.27 to play. It's Furman 19, Western Carolina 17. We'll take a network break right here on the Catamount Sports Network. Carolina West Sports Medicine at Harris Regional Hospital is honored to care for the community's athletes. Whether it's the high school or college level, we always bring our A game. Our physicians, trainers, and therapists are on the sidelines, on the field, and in the weight room, making sure your season is safe and successful. Call 586-7394 for information or visit MedWestHealth.org. When you attend Western Carolina events, stay with people who care at the Best Western Plus River Escape in Dillsboro. Part of the world's largest hotel chain, this Best Western has a style all its own and a view that can't be beat. Overlook a rambling river from your spacious room or relax on the scenic riverside patio. The Best Western provides clean, comfortable accommodations and an atmosphere flowing with charm. Be sure to mention the WCU friends and family rate for a discount and find us on the web at bwriverescape.com. This is CSN. Fans, welcome back. A nice drive. And, Steve, we finally got it to our go-to guy. We sure did. We've been looking for that all day long. The only second time he'd been targeted. Two plays, 69 yards, took only 28 seconds. Canoris Benson calling in that 55-yard scoring pass from Eddie Sullivan. Now the kick, and it's going to be brought back from the 11-yard line. The Furman Paladin is out to the 25-30. Down the left sideline, they have some room. Nice return down there by Tanner Skogan, one of their redshirt sophomore fullbacks and kickoff return man. Great field position. Gary, we've got to find us a kickoff person. I mean, this is somebody. <laughs> could, we, we just give the team so much great field position on our kickoffs. And special teams, as we were talking about, Steve, really, really big. 420 to play here, a two-point ball game, and now anybody's game. Wow. This, this is just, it's killing us. And I tell you, an exciting play to Kenoris Benson, and Eddie Sullivan put it on the money. First down and 10. Furman from the 40-yard line. Again, very good starting point for the Paladins as the quarterback runs it to the right side, and he's in the secondary. Richard Hayes, it's a foot race, and he's going to score, and that's a 60-yard touchdown by the running quarterback, Richard Hayes. We give it right back. Why don't you think when he comes in the ball game that he's going to carry the ball? He's either going to hand it off or he's going to run it. That's, it's been the, the entire game, Gary. Yep, it's no, no, uh, no secret. No question as to what he's going to do. Wow. But wow, I mean, just when you get the excitement back, all the wind goes right out of your sails as, again, Richard Hayes runs to the left side just outside the tight end, 60 yards. One play, 60 yards, and all of a sudden it just takes the starch out of everything that happened. The, the well, you're right. Before. Early for the PAT, and, Steve, you're right. Part of that set up by great field position for Furman. 4-11 to play. Bang, bang, touchdowns, 26 to 17. We'll be back after this timeout and this local break as you're listening to Catamount Football. Listening to Catamount Football on the Catamount Sports Network. Fans, welcome back. I want to give a shout out to Stephen Crumpler, dialed in from the Crystal Coast. He says, Go Catamounts. 
And as you mentioned, Steve, now our offense has got to come back and try to answer that Furman one play drive. And we got a penalty on the extra point, so uh, they're going to kick the ball off from midfield here, Gary. And so no chance really of a turn up, but they'll probably bounce something down and try to force us to uh, run back, run the ball back. You're right. As Ray Early is so good at that, that's why he's the also the conference kicker and punter. With 4-10 to play now in the third quarter, a lot of football left. And I tell you, things are just getting cranked up here in the third quarter. This one is going to be, oh, it's boomed way out of the end zone. Yep. That one's almost back in the uh, Catamount Club purple zone yeah, back there. Yeah, made into the weight room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. But uh, that, that, that means a lot. Again, field position, that, again, a factor huge. on that play. It, it, it really was, was huge. Yep. It's a lot easier to run one from 60 yards than it is 70 or 80, right? Yeah, you better believe it. Okay, let's see if we can answer here, Gary. This is important. Uh, you 4-11 to go here in the third quarter. Uh, you try to, you know, move the ball down, keep the ball away from this Furman offense right now. First down and 10. Furman with the biggest play of the night so far. One of the biggest plays on that 60-yard run by Hayes. Now the cutabout spot with the ball and four wides. Furman rushing four, and we run right up the gut. Here comes Ramsey again, a first down and a 13-yard gain. Ramsey over 100 yards now. He had 96 before that one, and he wow. picked up, what, uh, 13, yep, 12 yards on that play. Yep, 12 yards for Ramsey. Steve, he is running wild. This might yep. be his best night of the year. 11 carries right now, 108 yards. Great night for Darius Ramsey coming into the game, averaging 3.7 yards a carry, 437 yards on the entire year, over 100 already tonight. Sullivan back to throw, fires yep. too high. Nobody open as uh, Terrion Robinson covered over there right in front of Greg McClam. Yeah, again, I'm not sure if that wasn't uh, not on the same page between the receiver and the, the quarterback in that situation. But, again, a little more imagination offensively here. We were opening it up a little bit. And you got to when you're behind – Right now by nine points. Now we're bringing our wingman. Uh, sounds like an old Top Gun line as London Richardson comes in and sets up tight on the left side this time instead of in the wing on second down and 10. Catamounts have three wides. Furman rushing four. They bring the corner up to cheat like he's going to blitz, and now he backs off as Western Carolina sees it. Sullivan changes the play. Now the corner is back over there. Now he, here he comes, and the throw is going to be right to C.J. Goodman. Down to the 40-yard line. Spin move. Goodman still going all the way to the 30. Great run after the catch for number six, C.J. Goodman. I tell you, Steve, it's, it's going now. That time, they, Eddie Sullivan just drilled that ball. That's as much velocity I've seen him ever have on a ball. You got it, Steve. And I tell you, this, is, uh, this has been exciting here in the third quarter. And we've got another great drive going to try to answer that 60-yard Furman touchdown run. First down and 10, Catamounts just inside the 30-yard line of Furman. Fake to Ramsey, fires left side. There's Kadaris Benson again. He almost broke the tackle at the 21-yard line. Hanging on for his dear life down there was the quarterback. That's Austin Williams and Steve uh, Kanoris almost broke it. Yeah, that's right. 44-yard play before that to C.J. Goodman. And again, almost a, another broke a breakaway <laughs> for uh, Kenoris Benson. And I tell you, Kenoris Benson is a big play kind of guy. Obviously, we saw it in the Mars Hill game early yeah. in the year. Nine yards on that play. Now Sullivan takes the handoff. No, he hands off to Ramsey this time. Ramsey to the 21-yard line. It's still a yard shy of the first down. It's going to bring up a third down and short after the tackle by Danny Palmer. Again, almost a must situation now to get, uh, get some points out of this drive. At least a field goal, but you'd think a touchdown to keep the momentum. I totally agree. 26-17, Furman. Both teams have scored here with big plays in the third quarter, the most exciting quarter of the night, obviously. This is, this is where we've had problems, just bogging down. Sullivan in the shotgun, twins to the left side. 220 and counting, third quarter. Handoff, Ramsey straight ahead. He should have the first yes, down. He, Second effort, he's inside the 15. First time we've converted a third down all night long, Gary. That is hard to believe. Well, all afternoon and night. <laughs> <laughs> this game started at 3.30. Uh. Darkness is on the scene here in Color We will have a station ID coming up at about five or six minutes. Stay with us. First down and 10. Catamounts at the 14 of Furman. 2.08 and counting in the third quarter. Eddie Sullivan has really sparked the offense here tonight. He's going to run to the right side. He has some room. Cuts inside down to the 11. A gain of three. Eddie, since he came in off the bench midway through the second quarter, is 9 of 13 passing for what well, he's pushing right at 200 yards, 190-plus yards. Wow, what a, what a nine. And, again, uh, 
The officials talking something over here, Steve, and looks like it might be a penalty against the Catamounts. Oh, my goodness. Inopportune right there. Ooh, personal foul. How can you have a personal foul? Come on, guys. On Canoris Benson. On Canoris Benson away from the play. Wow. What is that all about? That's a tough penalty because the Catamounts uh, down inside the 10 now are going to be backed up. Now that was either misinterpreted or Canoris Benson just losing his uh, poise. Yep. I'm not sure which one it was. So now instead of having the football down near the 15, it backs up to the 20, well, actually near the 10, yeah. backs up to the 26. 26. So this is a long third down blaze. But this is four down territory, no doubt about it. Yep, you said it, Steve. So now first down, and we're going to need, need about 22 yards. 155 to play in the third quarter. Cats down by nine, 26 to 17. Need a touchdown and so we can get within a field goal range. Hey, you said it. Got to get points out of the drive. Sullivan three wides on the left side. Furman rushing four in the 4-2 defense. Fakes the handoff, fires left side. Got C.J. Goodman on the screen. C.J. down to the 22-yard line. Nice yeah. play and nice block over there by Benson. Had C.J. what we could see up here, he would have ducked inside that time and had a huge gainer. But uh, easy for us to see it up here and be not be in all that traffic on the field. So now Sullivan lining him up on the left hash. Three wides on the left side, kind of the short side of the field. 119 and counting, left to play, third quarter. Furman leads, 26-17. In the shotgun, Sullivan now stops his cadence and looks to the sideline for the play call. And offensive coordinator, Brad Glenn. A lot of fans still here tonight, though. A lot of fans, yeah. and we appreciate those who stayed with us tonight, and we're going to have a timeout. Furman okay. calls it with 103 guys on the score, 26-17. Furman will be back after this network break on the Catamount Sports Network. Success doesn't have a last name, a street address, or even a Facebook account. It has a mother named Hard Work and a father named Dedication. And when you combine that with Western Carolina University's programs at Biltmore Park, amazing things happen. Our new location features 22 programs from nursing to MBA, all designed to help create the future you dream of. Success may not have an address, but we're pretty sure we can help you find it. Visit BiltmorePark.wcu.edu to start your climb to success. Do you love the North Carolina mountains? Do you love getting out on the lake and spending time with the family? Well, then let me introduce you to Bear Lake Reserve, one of the only private mountain communities with a deep water recreational lake right in the heart of the community. What a great place to call home. There's boating, hiking, fishing, and some of the best mountain views in North Carolina. They even have a lake club with a restaurant, lakefront pool, and a thrilling water slide for the kids. Visit BearLakeReserve.com for more information, including their specially priced discovery package. That's BearLakeReserve.com. This is CSN. Fans, welcome back. 103 to play third quarter, and it's getting real here in the third quarter on Senior Day in Cullowhee. As now the Catamounts, after the timeout, have a third down coming up. We need about 17, almost yeah. 18 yards. Got to get inside about the four-yard line to pick up a first down. Of course, we're 22 yards away from end zone. So now the Catamounts trying to get points out of this one way or the other. Five receivers on the set. Sullivan with pressure. Rolls to the right side. Has a hole open field over there. He's going to try to run it. Sullivan down to the 13-yard line. Not enough for the first down. And I don't know. They're going to probably go for the field goal <laughs> yep. here, Gary. But uh, it's going to be a tough angle right here. It is going to be a tough angle from over there near the right hash mark. Right on the right hash mark. And let's see the... It's going to be a 19, be a 29-yard attempt from that hash mark. Not an easy angle. Not an easy angle. Richard Sigmund, 8 of 11 on his field goals this year. Of course, the big one when we beat Elon in overtime. Now, Richard Sigmund, good snap, good hole. The kick is up, and the it's kick good. is good. So with 19 seconds to play, the Catamounts get back on the board. It's now a six-point Furman lead. The Paladins 26 and the Catamounts 20. Lots of football still to go. Keep it right here as you're listening to Catamount Football.
This is CSN. Fans, welcome back. Catamount Sports Network. Steve, nice drive. Catamount's got three on the board, so we'll take it. You doggone right. Uh, it, it's just a, a situation where the Cats needed to touch down there, but we'll take it. That keeps us alive. Sigmund angling this kick toward the sideline. Yeah. It's going to be brought back from the 22, yeah. back out to the 30-yard line, and that's where the Furman Palins will take it first down and 10. Good coverage down there this time by the Catamounts on the tackle, K.P. Hicks. Again, uh, not uh, they didn't get great field position for the first time today, uh, Gary, but it's still not bad at the 31-yard line. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on this broadcast of Western Carolina University football. This is CSN. Welcome back with 14 seconds to play in the third quarter. And a quarterback is going to be Reese Hannon, the sophomore, as they again used Hannon and Hayes in interchangeable parts all day. The handoff is going to be McLeod yeah. straight ahead out to the 35-yard line. And that's going to be the final play of the third quarter, guys. As we head to the final 15 minutes of play, it's still anybody's game. Right now, Furman in the lead, 26-20 to 20 over Western Carolina University here on Senior Day in Kelowee. And keep it right here on the Catamount Sports Network. Legal trouble happens. If you've made one mistake, don't make it two. Choose the law offices of Earwood and Moore. Now with two locations to serve you, in Silva and in Cullowee. Call 828-339-1010. That's 828-339-1010. Or visit us at earwoodandmore.com. Defense attorneys Nathan Earwood and David Moore aggressively defending your rights when it matters most. Go beyond yellow with Yellow Book 360. Yellow Book 360 provides a full spectrum of marketing tools and services customized to help your business achieve success. Let us build and host a website for you. Get your business found on search engines. Promote your business online, offline, through video ads and direct mail. You'll receive expert advice along the way and metrics reports to let you know your plan is working. Find out how Yellow Book 360 can help your business achieve success. Call 1-800-YB-YELLOW today. That's 1-800-YB-YELLOW. Here's the Allison Outdoor Advertising Scoreboard Update. Fans, welcome back to Cullowee. We're about to go with the fourth quarter. Let's check SoCon scores on this Saturday afternoon. Under a minute to go down in Birmingham, Alabama, Chattanooga and Sanford knotted up at 14 all. Three finals in from earlier today. Georgia Southern knocks off Elon 38 to 20. Appalachian State gets a road win down at Wofford 33 21. And the Citadel winning over VMI 31 to 10. Here in Cullowee, as we start the fourth, it's Furman 26, the Catamounts 20, as we send it back to Gary and Steve. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Second down now. We're ready to go for the final quarter of the day, but what a day it has been as now Furman in the I formation is looking at second down and five as they have a six-point lead. Entering the fourth quarter, 26-20, Kenemus coming on a blitz, and the blitz paid off. There's a huge blitz by Jaleel Lorquid, and he came in at the right time, Steve, and stuck the back in the backfield for a five-yard loss. Cornerback blitz that time. I haven't seen that many times. That's the second time, though, Jaleel's got to the quarterback on that particular kind of blitz, and we got a Furman uh, lineman down, or is that a lineman? I think it is. I can't see his number unless Greg can see it from his vantage point on the sideline. Cannot make him my way down there. But it, uh, that was a huge hit there right there and a big play. Uh, Going to uh, bring up another third down play for the Furman Paladins. And, again, they've been pretty productive out here, uh, uh, 8 of 16 today. And that is, looks like the running back on the play, Marcus Anderson, yeah. the redshirt freshman. And there's a media timeout on the field with 14.47 to play, and we'll take a local break down the line. Keep it right here. You're listening to Catamount Football.
This is CSN. And so back, the injured player was Furman redshirt freshman running back Marcus Anderson. He's helped off the field, and he is not putting any weight at all on his left leg. We hope he's going to be okay. Third down now for the Furman Paladins. They need nine, but again, Steve, their success rate pretty good. Oh, it's exactly right. 50% today. Anytime you're around 50%, you're doing a good job. Catamounts are going to be rushing three. Obvious passing down. Four wides for Furman. Now the Catamounts showing blitz up front. And let's see if we back off. Here comes Cortland Carson on the blitz. And Hannon back to throw. Fires right side. Yep. Catamount wide open on the sideline. That's Ryan Culbreth for a huge first down. I tell you, that, he just, that was a beautiful pass right yep. there. We had to blitz. Uh, the offensive, uh, offensive line again doing a great job of blocking and uh, even though uh, he was uh, threw that into double coverage, a yeah, great throw. So now, a, again, a big third down conversion for Furman yep. at the 45-yard line, 14-20, still to play. Gain of 15, a huge third down. So now, Twins on the left side, Furman, and the Catamounts are going to be rushing four in the 43 defense. Now split backs beside Reese Hannon. Hannon back to throw again. Plenty of time. Fires got his man at the 45-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line this time. And that's going to be Jordan Snellings knocked out of bounds over there by the Catamount secondary. Just cannot put any pressure on him at all, Gary. Uh, that's right. nope. another 15-yard completion. And too much time. Trey Morgan, the freshman quarterback over there on the coverage. But, Steve, you're right. When you give a quarterback that much time, somebody is going to break open. That's right. First down and 10. This time they send Twins to the right. There's going to be Snellings and Suttles over there. Catamounts now again rushing four. 13-45 yep. to play. Now a new quarterback in. It's going to be Hayes. Here he goes again up to the 40-35. Down to the 31-yard line. It's going to be Richard Hayes. Every time he's in, he either runs or hands off. That time Jalil Orquette was coming on uh, the cornerback blitz again, and he just ran right inside of him and picked up a good one. had Loquette been at the line of scrimmage, might have made the tackle, but another uh, good conversion, a good pickup by Furman. Well, that kind of keeps your defense on its yeah. heels. And now Reese Hannon right back in after that run by quarterback Richard Hayes. Cannot let them put a touchdown on the board right here. So now, this time under center, which is kind of unusual for Furman, second down and one. And they had the offset eye formation, twins stacked on the right side, and a long count now by Hannon under center. And he turns. He's going to hand off and a nice hole to run through. And, well, close to a first down second effort. The whistle yep. blew, and that's Hank McLeod. And he's going to look like a tad short here if uh, this, yeah, I think it's just going to be short of the first down. Steve, I think you're right. He's right at the 30. He needed to get just inside the 30. And Greg McClam, you probably well, can see down the uh, scrimmage line, but it looks like he's short. Well, one guy, one marker had third down, the other one had second down. Now they're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got to make about two feet. All right, thanks, Greg. 12.23 to play. We'll check in with Greg in just a minute, see if there are any new developments on the Ketamont sideline. Third down and short, Furman at the 30-yard line of Western Carolina. We need a mistake here by Furman. <laughs> no kidding. We need, a, we need a big play and a turnover. Snellings wide right, got the wingman in motion to the right side, and a penalty flag, and it should be against Furman. Uh, both, both players pointing each direction there. Wow, here's an interesting stat, Steve. Sanford missed a 55-yard field goal attempt at the end of regulation. They're heading to overtime. Sanford 14, Chattanooga 14. And, what a game. And that could motivate Furman here because, like we say, if Sanford beats Chattanooga and Furman wins here today, they are still in great position to get that at large. I mean, that Guys, automatic bid to the Southern Conference. Don't know if you put that up there, but there was no foul on the play. Furman actually called a timeout before delay game was called on. Okay. And we'll keep it right here because obviously they're about 20 seconds into the timeout with 12.05 to play. Thanks a lot, Greg. Greg, down on the sidelines, speaking of that, uh, any new developments? And I will say this, a lot of Catamount fans are still here in the fourth quarter. Not only are they still here, they're also remaining vocal, Gary, which is essential to make sure the Catamounts play well. I mean, you get the Catamount players actually trying to get everybody up on third down, which does often help the defense. Hey, thanks a lot, okay. Greg. Uh, Catamount basketball tonight at Liberty. Uh, Virginia yep. Tech last night had a horrible shooting night last night, hoping to come back tonight. Then next weekend they go up to Kent State. Uh, that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday for three ball games against Kent, Niagara, and USC Upstate. Uh, USC Upstate knocked off Virginia Tech last week. And then our next home game, November the 26th, here against Limestone. So, again, a lot of road games for the Catamounts early. Six in a row, three this week, three next week. 
And uh, not a lot of home games before Christmas. Yeah, that's right. November the 26th, Limestone, our next home game. Here they're coming out quick. Third down, short. They line them up quick. Now the Catamounts line up quick. And now they're trying to draw us offside with kind of a long snap here. Now they're going to run to the right side. Quarterback throws, and it's going to be complete, and it's a first down and then some. Out there now, is going to be Tanner Skogan, the fullback. Boy, was that deceptive, Gary. The overload of unbalanced line to the right looks like a run all the way, and one man, one receiver out there in the pattern, and they just roll out and catch everybody thinking run. You're right, and Skogan just kind of slipped out of the backfield, Steve. He was wide open on the play, and they were – our Catamount defense were – they were thinking run. A big conversion, picked up eight yards on that play and keeps this drive alive. Again, now 11.46 to play. Furman, a touchdown here is going to be tough to overcome. At the 22-yard line, 11.40 to play. You're right, Steve. Clock ticking away. Twins now trips on the left side for the Paladins and Hannon, the quarterback, in the shotgun, wants to throw. Again, has all night. Fires and overthrows his man. Jordan Snelling's running a short route, and then uh, Hannon threw long. Yeah. Bryson Jordan that time, uh, Doing a good job defensively, but a little bit high. So now second down and 10. Catamounts on the road for our final game of the year next Saturday in Boone. And looks like we have a whistle and Coach Mark Spear talking with the head referee about something over there. Yeah, I don't know what's, what that was all about. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's something to do with the clock is what he's, uh, sounds like what he's talking about. But anyway, nothing's moving right now. No clock action, so uh, let's go. But here again, let's see. This situation now, quarterback, have you got Hayes back in there? Yes. So yes, this he, means it's some kind of run. Yep. Hayes back in the shotgun now and second down and 10 at the 22-yard line of Catamount Land. Firming up 26-20. And it's going to be Hayes. Here he comes. Yep. He squirts right down inside to the 17-yard line. Am I the only one can see that, Gary? That every time he's in the game, He's going to either carry the ball or hand it off, and wow. Pretty obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, pretty obvious. 11-10 to go, and he burned us one time on a 60-yard touchdown yeah. run around the left end. But give his offensive line a lot of credit, too, oh, yeah. Gary. They're, yeah. they're opening some big holes, and they're really wearing down our front offensive yeah. line. Across the front, they go 6'5", 300, 6'1", yeah. 290, 6'2", 265, 6'3", 260, and 6'2", 253 pounds. And, they, and Furman's offense has had the ball for 22 more plays than the Catamounts. Wow, that's a big edge. Third down. Hannon fires right side, got his man. He's knocked out of bounds over there. Good coverage, but it's going to be close to a first down at the 14-yard line as yep. Hannon comes right back in following Hayes. And Bryson Jordan again making a nice tackle over there. Pass complete to Jordan Snellings. And it's going to be field goal time, fourth down. They're going to try to kick for three and make it a nine-point game, yeah. which would be a two-score game. Yeah, that would be big right there. That's yeah. almost as good as a touchdown. You said it. Would and force the Catamounts to score twice. Ray Early, four for five on field goals. This is going to be a 30-yarder. This is just a chip shot for him. He is 15 of 17 on the year. This one is up, and it's going to be plenty of leg. It's good. So Ray Early continues to boom him through, and now the Paladin lead is nine as we go to a timeout. 10-16 to play here in Kelohe. It's Furman 29 and Western Carolina 20. We'll be back after this network break on the Catamount Sports Network. There's just something about being in the mountains that inspires you to create, to explore new possibilities. And when you learn something that actually touches someone's life, you'll never be the same. Western Carolina University is a hub of innovation and a place to call home. I guess that's why they say your climb starts here. For more information, visit wcu.edu. 19 men's and women's sports, 20 road scholars, 11 prestigious academic institutions, an APR of 982, fifth in the nation. Eight FCS National Championships. Established the first conference basketball tournament, home to iconic sports figures. This is the nation's fifth oldest conference, the Southern Conference. This is CSN. Fans back at Whitmire Stadium, Jeff Bryson here along with Gary Ayers, Steve White, and Greg McClam. Don't forget to join us for the Carolina Ford Dealers postgame report 
We'll recap all of today's action here at Whitmire Stadium. Also check scores around college football on the Allison Outdoor Advertising Scoreboard. We'll hear from Catamount head coach Mark Spear, and we'll name the Holiday and Express of Dillsborough Catamount Sports Network player of the game. It's all straight ahead coming up after regulation on the Carolina Four Dealers postgame report. Right now, 10-16 to go here in Cullowee. Our score, Furman 29, and the Catamounts 20. Here's Gary and Steve. Thanks a lot, Jeff. So Furman will be kicking it off, Steve. And again, the MVP for Furman today, obviously, has been Ray Early as he just keeps booming the football. Yeah, five field goals. Uh, that's not bad. <laughs> not a bad day. Today's attendance, not bad either. 8,388. And uh, early tied Furman school record with five field goals after that kick, Steve. So obviously, yeah. pretty darn good day. That drive, 11 plays. 56 yards consumed uh, five minutes off the clock. Early kicks it off and he kicks it deep again. This one again going out of the end zone. No question here. And again, 8,388 attendance and again, five field goals of the 29 points for Furman's Ray Early tying their record. And two of, uh, well, six of Western's points have come on field goals from Richard Sigmund. So seven field goals in this ballgame. That's a lot of points off a kicker's foot, isn't right. it? And that I mean, tells you how big the kicker is. Yeah, and also defense has been pretty good both ways here today. You're right. Right now we'll look at these uh, stats when you get a break here just to show you what we're talking about. 10-16 to go. Catamounts with the ball. Eddie Sullivan has had a fine game for the Catamounts here. He has three wides here on the first down as he fakes the handoff. Fires. Got his man at the 35. Out to the 37-yard line and a big stick out there. But our Catamount uh, receiver jumps right back up. That's his and brother that's John. His brother John. Yep. So that's the third time they've uh, hooked up today. <laughs> John goes out of the lineup now. Coming back in is going to be Willie Police. C.J. Goodman also on the right yep. side. 13-yard gain on that play. Nice play to Brother John from Brother Eddie. First down and 10, Catamounts. That puts Eddie over 200 yards now, 201 yards, 11 of 16 passing. So now Eddie checking off at the line of scrimmage as he adjusts the call. Twins on the left side. Furman with six guys up in the box here on first down. Eddie wanting to throw again, has pressure. Now tries to run away, tries to get a block and fires too low. And I think, Steve, he was just trying to get rid of the ball because, again, he had too much pressure. Uh, that's right, and Terry and Robinson just could not get back to the ball, but that's exactly right. Just don't take a loss in this situation. 9.38 to play. Talking about stats, Steve, uh, not the way we want them. No, that's right. 380 yards for Furman here on 66 plays. Western 342 on 48 plays. Wow, what a difference. 18 yeah. more plays for Furman. Yeah, and almost nine minutes of possession time, too. Those are two big numbers here tonight. Second down and 10 now for the Catamounts. Eddie Sullivan with three wide on the left side. Furman rushing four again, and Eddie drops the snap, and he tries to pick it up, and when he does, he's going to be sacked back at the 21-yard line. Coming in was Carl Ryder, and again, Steve, the snaps have been an issue today. Oh, my goodness. That's uh, several times. Uh, that last possession when we were trying to had to settle for a field goal, two bad snaps. So, again, the snap uh, has been a problem. That's going to be a mm. loss all the way from the 38, Gary, back mm -hmm. to the 23. That's a 15-yard loss. Big loss, and now it's going to bring up a third down, and we're going to need about 25 yeah. yards. That's a little different situation. Got to throw one down the field here with four wides, and Furman back in prevent defense. Yeah. They're going to be rushing only three. Hopefully we can give Eddie Sullivan time, but, again, when you got eight guys and – Pass coverage and only four receivers. Kind of makes it tough. Eddie Sullivan back that to throw, a penalty flag down. Illegal procedure there, I think is what it is. Looked like we jumped, our offensive lineman moved before the snap. And I think all four of them did. Yeah. Wow, that's going to make it. Thanks, Greg. Third down and 30. So our center's having a real rough ball game. Man alive. Yep, I'll start. 8.46 to play. Still a cool evening. Temperatures dropping, yeah. obviously, but it's been, a, it's been a nice day for the game. Yeah. Again, you take away five or six bad snaps have just uh, blown, blown up some plays, and wow. That time the center didn't snap the ball, and everybody moved. Everybody jumped. So uh, it has been a tough afternoon. Back to the 18 now, Gary. We've got third down and uh, two acres. Third down and long. Here comes pressure again. We can't keep three guys out, and Eddie Sullivan has to run for his life, and he's still running 30-35. Out to the 40-yard line. Eddie Sullivan all the way out to the 48-yard line, and he may have the first down. Uh, I think he's going to be maybe a foot short. Oh, uh, he's close. He's close, but uh, nah, okay, I don't know if they're going to measure or not. It's going to be about a foot short, it looks like. 
and it is we got to go for it. It is really, really close. Yeah. But, yeah, but I think, Steve, you're right. It's about a foot short. Yeah. Not sure about that. Uh, not sure about the way they spotted that football yeah. either. And again, he just, uh, what, what a, a turning Man. a disaster into <laughs> something good. Are they going to measure? But it looks like he was short. But, Steve, the tough thing is they were rushing three. We still couldn't keep them out. Yeah, that's right. Uh, again, they're just uh, a young, evolving offensive line. And I think we a got a veteran it. offensive line. Nope. Nope. It's, it's a little short. Ooh, it just barely. Yep. Wow. Greg, had, how short was that? Six Gary, inches maybe? Uh, no, it, it's uh, like a chain length. Gary, I've had wow. too much experience looking down here. How many years? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's only less than six inches short. We, we got to go. We, we, I don't care what's the situation. You got to go for it here. Uh, fourth down and very, very short. 8.07 yeah. to play. We're down by nine. We got to have two scores. It was almost a 30-yard gain by Eddie Sullivan. What a run. And he was running for his life. This time he hands off, and we go yeah. straight ahead. I think got we it. have we it. We got it. We got it. Just we didn't get it by much, but we got it as yeah. Ramsey bangs it out to the 48-yard line. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that was close. <laughs> that's good. 7.57 to play. Still alive, Gary. Still got a heartbeat. You're right. If we can score here, that really turns it upside down. Yes, it does. Then up to the defense. And uh, we do have a final end. Jeff, watch the score down there. All right, Sanford just kicked a field goal. They win it in overtime over Chattanooga. The Bulldogs 17, the Mox 14, again, final in OT. Wow, that throws the Southern Conference race in a big mess. As Eddie Sullivan tried to run, no. we have a penalty flag. No. He threw it, but he was tangled up at the 45. Boy, I tell you, we are having a heck of a time blocking uh, Furman uh, three-man rush right now. We are just not giving Eddie Sullivan much time, and he's trying to make some things happen, but a flag down, and yep. I hope it's not a holding call. Yeah, uh, that, that, that was, that was a situation. And, again, we're having to resort to holding to even uh, yep. to slow him down. Holding call against the Catamounts, that's going to back us up. We've said it many times, Gary. You win the ball game in the trenches, <laughs> offensive and defensive line play, and Western not there yet, but they're working on it. Uh, well, Steve, this Southern Conference race, now Chattanooga has two losses, yep. Sanford has two losses, and Furman with two losses. And if Furman would win here today, beat Wofford next week, and I think the other scenarios is pretty obvious what's going to happen. They get the automatic bid to the uh, Southern to the FCS playoffs. Unbelievable. Yeah. But, but Chattanooga's uh, their conference season is now over as they're six yeah, and two. They go to Alabama next week. Yep. Okay, here we go. Uh, penalty is that a ten yard penalty? Yep. Yes. Going to back it up to the thirty nine yard line. Catamounts now four wides. First down and about twenty seven twenty two to play in the ball game. Eddie Sullivan in the shotgun. Furman again only rushing three. Here comes the blitz. They're blitzing two linebackers. Yeah. Pass is going to be incomplete, yeah. but this time they brought the blitz, Steve, and Eddie had no time again. Again, we're just having a heck of a time blocking three guys. Now, they did blitz two linebackers yeah. that yeah. time. They but, brought them, but But still. again, we, we didn't even block the initial. <laughs> initial it's been a tough time. Those but are the uh, guys that collapsed on Eddie that time. Yep. And they are bringing it. One of those is uh, big John Mackey, a six foot, 285 pound nose tackle who is a red shirt sophomore he is really bringing it right okay. up the middle all right let's let's try to pick up this yardage in a couple of plays second down and 20 this time they're going to be rushing four here's a good pass to terry on robinson complete to the 50 that's going to get about uh, 11 yards back so it's going to bring up a third down and nine yeah terry on after he catch it not much place to run right there uh just could not break it big yeah, good tackle over there by uh, Greg Worthy, their strong safety. He's their leading tackler, yeah. 101 tackles on the year. A gain of uh, 10 on the play, so we're now third and a long eight here. Now coming into the lineup for the Catamounts. A new receiver checking in, and that's going to be Tyler Sexton. A tight yeah. end lines up. This has got to be four down territory. I don't care where, where we are on the field now. Six and a half minutes to play, third down and nine. Sullivan in the shotgun with four wides. One man, a wing on the left side. Now Furman, four men up front. Now they back. Here come the blitz again from Furman. And Sullivan gets away from part of the blitz. He's running, 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 and still running. He finally runs out of bounds at the 45. He gains about four yards. But again, Steve, just kind of running on a broken play. Yeah, it gets a manageable uh, fourth down play here. But again, uh, 
just Eddie, no time to operate back there right now. They're just uh, their defense is just running over our offensive line. And Steve, I'll give Furman credit. They're really mixing up their blitzes when oh, they're yeah. coming after Eddie. Oh yeah, very very smart. That's why I guess they have a 95% graduation rate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they they do. Their graduation rate is outstanding. Fourth down. Catamounts need five. Six minutes to play. We're down by nine. We need a conversion. Eddie Sullivan back to throw. Has a little time. Fires, yep. but the receiver running down. He ran the pass short and a miscommunication between yep. quarterback and receiver. That's right. Uh, Goodman was uh, down about five yards beyond the passing pattern. Uh, again, uh, good defense on the part of Furman. Uh, just uh, not able to execute. But uh, Eddie Sullivan's doing what he can today. It's just not much time to operate back there. You're right, Steve. He had to let that one go probably early. Yep. But uh, Coach Mark Spears said last week at Georgia Southern, we had some receivers running mm -hmm. some patterns that weren't yep. accurate. That must be the, well, he did, really didn't have time to even look at him. Yep. Uh, that might be the play of the game right there as far as uh, – icing it for the Furman Paladins. 5.52 yeah. to play. Yeah, Furman takes it down and scores. This one, uh, this one's pretty well in the bag. They hand off to the left side. It's going to be McLeod knocked down at the 48-yard line. Good stop over there by Christian Gill. And again, John McBeth out of the game today with a head injury. We hope he's going to be okay and we will be able to play next Saturday at Appalachian State. Andre Shishkin, one of our best defensive tackles out for the year with an MCL. We really miss him, Steve. He was our leading tackle for yeah. lost man and our leading sacker. Sacker, right. The, the Russian bear. Yes. He was really, and he's a redshirt senior, and obviously he was a good one. Second down, 5-10 to go now. Paladins need eight. They stack him on the right side. Offset eye for quarterback Reese Hannon as he hands off to McLeod again, dancing across the 50-yard line, and he picks up about three more. It's going to bring up third down and four. Let's face it, uh, Gary, we need a turnover. They have not turned the ball over all day long, no turnovers. So uh, that uh, that's what we need right now from the Furman Paladins. And we said coming in, that was a big stat. They really aren't the best on offense or the best on defense, but they're the best in the conference in turnover margin, and obviously that's a factor today. Yeah. They are a plus nine in turnovers on the season. Best in the league. Four and a half minutes to play now. Again, time running out on the Catamounts who needs two scores. And right now, Furman needs four for a first down on third down and four. Now back in the ball game is Richard Hayes, the running quarterback. Got to watch him. Here he goes. Left side, bounces outside, and he runs to the 45-yard line, very close to a Furman first down before being yeah. tackled by Sertonius Harris. I think he might be an inch or two short there, a few inches short. But, again, when he got to you know what's going to happen, and we still can't stop him. Brian Johnson on the tackle. They're going to bring in the well, change of measure. A, he got a good spot there. so He might have it, but it's going to be very, very close. Close indeed. Next Saturday, Steve, on the air at 2.30, uh, 3.30 kickoff time up at Boone as we take on the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. I think it'll be short. Today. Yeah. And, uh, Gary, they have uh, turned their season around a little bit now. They're yeah. playing much better, App State. Yeah. They are. Three and four on the conference, even though they can't win the yeah. conference, and they're not going to, but but they have improved. We thought that, hoping they would just give up on the season. They're going to be a little bit short. Yeah. Greg McClam is right. And Furman is short. Fourth down. They need less than a foot, though. They may very well go for it. Oh, I think they will. I think they will. Yeah. I mean, they need a foot. They get a first down. And then, uh, boy, yeah, they, they uh, have things in their favor. They're going to keep Hayes in there at quarterback. Yep. He's the runner. And look for here maybe something to maybe try to draw Western offsides. A long count. They still got plenty of timeouts. Yep. Well, they, excuse me. I take that back. They only got one left. They have one. But they're not worried about stopping the clock. They want a first down, and then, Steve, they can use a yeah. lot of clock. Exactly four minutes to play. Furman up by nine here, 29 to 20. And here again, uh, something freaky happened. We get the ball back. We're still alive. That's it. Big fourth down play here. If Furman converts, they can use a whole lot more time, and it's still running at 350 and counting. Yeah, I think that may be what they're going to do, try to draw us off sides. I'm not sure. Here they come quickly to the line of scrimmage. Last time they ran that yeah. swing pass to the fullback and converted the first down. And this time the quarterback yep. runs it, penalty flagged okay. down. And I'm not – did anybody see what that was? Might, I did not might see. Might be an offside. Oh, which way? Uh, we might have jumped. Of course, okay. 
were we drawn if we were not? That's an automatic first down, Furman. Yeah, it looks like it's Furman. Yep. I Furman's, think we got, yeah, Furman's got it. Mm -hmm. Offset. Yep, we were offside. And now three and a half minutes to play, and Furman can almost, almost, but they can run a lot of clock out here. They can almost use it all. And uh, we're getting the old, what, me? Call down there on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, for the cutouts number uh, 91 there, Brian Johnson said, I was not offside. Yep. Coming in to take his place now, the cutouts bring in Andrew Mayton, a freshman defensive lineman. So, Well, guys, I will also tell you that the center moved the ball enough that they would have got the first down just with his movement of the ball. Yeah. So now first down for him at the cutout 40. Clock running three and a half. And now they can use a lot of time on every down. We need a small miracle here, Gary. Yeah, basically a turnover. Yes. Got to have the ball back. We need two scores down by nine. Furman probably is going to run the ball. They line him up in the eye formation. McLeod, the deep man. He came into the game with over 850 yards. And they hand it to the fullback, actually, and he runs front right up the gut all the way down inside the 25-yard line. Another Furman first down. Again, I wow. think it, they're just wearing us down up front. And, uh, again, we're just like a half a step short right now of getting to plays. And, Steve, that's the first time tonight I think they've handed it to the fullback, the first man in the eye, and he busted it right ahead. Yeah, over almost 75 plays from scrimmage for Furman in this ball game, and uh, a lot of running plays. Let's see. That'll be 45 running plays in the game. So, yeah, they're wearing us down a little bit now. Yep. And now inside the 25-yard line with a new first down, they continue to use up more time, 240 and counting. Yep. They can just be very conservative here. Yes. Run the A, back, a gap, B gap, and C gap, and that's all they need to do. That's it. This time Hannon under center. I formation again, hands off to the fullback again, runs to the right side for two or three yards down yep. to the 21-yard line. Really a busted play that time, Gary. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the quarterback ran into the fullback. And now the cutabouts use a timeout with 224. And we'll take a timeout as well. Our score, Furman 29, Western Carolina 20. We'll be back after this local break. You're listening to Catamount Football. This is CSN. 224 to play in the ball game. Furman with a second down and eight as they're trying to run as much time as they can to keep the ball away from the Catamounts who need two scores here in the final 224 of play here on senior day. But uh, Furman uh, just a little too much firepower on offense here this afternoon. Out of the eye formation now. Hannon lining him up again using uh, every second he can before he snaps the ball. Catamount showing blitz. Got the tight end in motion. And he turns and hands off to McLeod who cuts it back inside to the 18-yard line. And just keeps piling his legs driving. Picks up, makes something. Three or four yard gain out of nothing there, Gary. But he knew uh, they've got to be playing. they got to be feeling pretty good about themselves right now, Gary. Uh, they win this ball game and they are uh, thinking playoffs right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got to beat Wofford next week. And if they beat Wofford, they're going to have a share of the Southern Conference championship. And if, uh, I'd say unless we have another just a couple of crazy things happen in the league, they'll be going to represent the Southern Conference in the FCS playoffs. Yeah. And now it's going to be interesting for Chattanooga. Chattanooga yeah. already has a share of the championship because their Southern Conference season is over. Now that brings up the question, will Chattanooga get a playoff Yeah, bid? and uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think they will. I think we got a possibility of getting two this year. But, you know, this is the first time 
I think the first time that Southern Conference has not had a team in the top ten in probably 25 years, at least 25 years, Gary. Long Nobody time. in the top ten. Yeah, either a long the, time. Either the coaches poll or the media poll of the uh, FCS or 1AA, whichever one you want to call it. Yeah. But, but uh, it's uh, yeah, it hasn't been a great year for the Southern Conference. Yeah. And with the way that looks, it may be, it could be Sanford and maybe uh, Wofford on the outside looking in. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Wofford is just sort of falling apart lately. So Appalachian third, State beating them today. Third down now for the Furman Paladins. 2.16 to play. Again, Reese Hannon under center in the I formation. Hands off to the fullback again. He runs to the right side yep. down to the 14-yard line. Short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down and a couple. And the Catamounts, I think, will use our last timeout. Yeah, Christian Gill that time uh, making a stop. And we'll keep it right here with 2.09 to play. And remind everybody that uh, all the stuff coming up on the postgame show, all the stats, all the scores, and the interview, of course, uh, Greg McClam and head coach Mark Spear all on the postgame show. And again, uh, next week, again, what, what better way, as we said earlier, uh, playing Furman and App State, your two biggest Southern Conference rivals since we've been in the league back in 1977. And we go back one more time, try to bring that jug home we're permanently. Oh. We're going to put that thing, if we get it up there next Saturday, Gary, we're going to put it in a case, bulletproof, uh, burglar-proof. Nobody can get to it. Uh, you know, as they, as they call it seal it, uh, hermetically seal it. Yeah. Don't yeah. let anybody in. That's it. But, but never every, to leave. Yeah, again. But, again, uh, like I say, a rivalry like that, you never know. App State, though, playing much better than they were earlier in the season, as was Furman coming in here. But what a turnaround for this Furman team. Losing to Gardner-Webb, uh, Coastal Carolina early. Oh, had to block a field goal to beat Presbyterian. Here goes Ray Early for another record, uh, yep. looking for his, what, his sixth field goal Six of the game? Sixth field goal. He tied a school record with five yeah. today. This is a 32-yard effort from the right hash mark. And he boots it up. Again, plenty of distance. And it's going to be good. And he has the record, six field goals in one game. That's a Furman Paladin record. And that pretty well seals it for the Furman Paladins as they lead 32 to 20 with 2.04 to play. And we'll be back in just a moment from Cullowhee, USA. So keep it right here on the Catamount Sports Network. CatamountSports.com is your online home for Western Carolina Catamount Athletics. The official website includes information on all 16 of WCU sports, updated rosters, statistics, and interactive fun like the Catamount Fan Poll. CatamountSports.com is also your home for live coverage with streaming video through Catamount All Access, plus live streaming audio and game tracker. CatamountSports.com, your source for Catamount Athletics. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. This is CSN. Fans, welcome back. As Ray Early with a record-setting six mil goals. Just boots one all the way back to the back of the end zone. No return. With 2.04 to play, the Paladins with a 12-point lead here on Senior Day in Cullowee. But, Steve, again, another solid drive. That's right. Uh, again, Ray Early converting his six field goal. Eight plays, uh, 39 yards, uh, three minutes and 48 seconds. Uh, on that drive to put probably the icing on the cake for Furman as they now lead by 12 points with 2.04 to play. Furman, 73 plays from scrimmage, 414 yards. Pretty balanced there, 270 yards rushing, 144 passing. Western, 57 plays, 386. Not bad offensive numbers, yeah. but again, but the big number jumps out to you, one for 12 on third down conversions. So now Eddie Sullivan has had a good day. Fires is going to be complete out there to C.J. Goodman yeah. for a seven-yard gain on first down. Furman's going to give you that, but they're yeah. not going to give you anything long as they're right now at least four or five deep in this secondary. Uh, right now they got two, six, eight men in the passing lanes, yeah. eight, eight men. Eight guys back there in coverage. Eddie Sullivan is going to step up, and he's going to throw, and oh. he throws behind his man, and it was almost picked off out there by defensive end Gary Wilkins. 
again, just about a panic situation right now. Yeah. And it's, it, it's kind of tough. I mean, down by 12, obviously two scores would would get us right back in there with a minute 40 to play, but, but it's going to have to have uh, almost a miracle finish. Yeah. And we have no timeouts. We've used all our timeouts. Furman has one left. Eddie Sullivan back to throw again. Fires this yep. one in the dirt. Incomplete. Fourth down now and two. Again, interesting. We've only gone downfield one time to Kenoris Benson in this ball game, and uh, uh, I'm not sure. I think that's his only catch. Yeah, and he had one in the end zone there that was he was a targeted on. He had that one nine. He had that nine yard reception earlier. Yep. Yeah. The leading receiver in the league, almost, uh, almost uh, Shut unheard out. of. Yeah. yeah. Back to throw, Sullivan again, steps up, steps up. Now he's got to run out to the 40, and he's going to be knocked yep. down at the 41. That's a first down. Furman's going to give you that all day long. Yep. But, again, Canoris uh, open briefly down there. Gary Wilkins again on the tackle, the Furman defensive end, a minute 27 and counting. Again, the Catamounts cannot stop the clock. The chains are set. Now the clock starts to run. Furman rushing four. Eddie Sullivan stepping up again. The defensive end is after him, and he's running and goes down at the 48-yard line. A little bit short of the first down, I think, but uh, that's not that's not the problem right now. 117 <laughs> to play. Yeah. Marcus McMorris, the Southern yeah. Conference Defensive Player of the Week, coming up. Yes, let's call it 48-yard line. It was a first down. McMorris on the tackle. And now back to throw. Eddie fires over on the right side. Pass is going to be complete over there to Terry Ann Robinson. Steps out of bounds. You just think we're going to have to do something, go downfield here long. Uh, just flood a zone and try to, you know, even a, maybe a Hail Mary situation. If he if he has time to, to throw the ball. Right now he's having trouble even getting time to throw it. Three-man rush, five wides for the Catamounts. Here they come with a blitz. Blitz on, and he throws incomplete over there to uh, his brother, John Sullivan, on the sideline. But even with the blitz, they've got everybody covered back there. And it would uh, uh, They've got two safety valves and – one on one on everybody else that's surrounding the patterns. Yep. And right now Sullivan goes out. Coming back in, it's going to be Darius Ramsey on third down. We need eight. 106 to go here on Senior Day, Throwback Uniform Day, 83 30th Anniversary Celebration Day. A lot of things coming. Here they come with a blitz, and he swings it out to Ramsey. Ramsey out of bounds at the 42. Short of the first down, it's going to bring up fourth down and four. Again, uh, I'd like to get another score on the board, even though I, it's going to be tough to pull it out, minute and one to play. But pick up the first down. Something short here. Pick up your first down. Keep the drive alive. This time Robinson wide to the right side. Everybody else wide on the left side. Single coverage up there up top to the left. Sullivan fires down the middle. Got Terrion at the 35. Terrion down to the 26. First down, Catamounts. And with 57 seconds to play, that'll stop the clock while they move the sticks. Again, Furman, now we'll start uh, getting a little tougher here as we get inside the 20-yard line. Still rushing three. Sometimes they will bring the linebackers. Sometimes they won't. They really mix it up this time, rushing three. Everybody else dropping back. Eddie Sullivan is going to have to run it again, and he dives to the 21, and that's all as he picks up five. Again, I don't know what happened to a couple of receivers. They never got out for some reason. Now five wide. He spikes it this time to stop the clock with 39 seconds. Yeah, no timeouts left for the Catamounts. But, again, we got two more downs to try to pick well, pick up a first down or get into the end zone and make it look a little more respectable. Yep. And, Steve, as you mentioned, Catamount basketball on the road tonight up at Liberty coming down the road from Virginia Tech last night up in Blacksburg. Yeah, trying to overcome a, a horrible shooting night last night. Yep. And the Catamount women are down near uh, Fayetteville City and Campbell at Campbell. Bowie's Creek. Beautiful Bowie's Creek. Here comes the all-out blitz by Furman. Eddie fires, and Darius Ramsey catches it, steps out of bounds. And, and now he's got, I think he's got the first, can't tell yep, from he here. It. Yeah, he got the first Gary, down. I don't know if you can call Bowie's Creek beautiful. Well, <laughs> I'm being nice. Now, that's my <laughs> wife's alma mater. Be careful there, guys. That's my neck of the woods. It's yeah. near Irwin, the denim capital of the world. Yes. <laughs> hey, like hey, I say, we're trying to be nice. you got to go down. That's a, that is a beautiful campus down there now. And the pass oh. is too low for Terry on Robinson, who was open at the four-yard line. They they've really have. Uh, a, a, that campus has really evolved over the last 10 years. It really has. Yeah. 
Campbell uh, with a law school, I think uh, pharmacy, yeah, pharmacy school, school maybe. School, hey, yeah. And let me tell you, their football stadium in press box, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Medical school down there now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So a uh, very solid well, well, academic back, institution. Back to the ball game. <laughs> yes, indeed. Second down. Right now, 10 for the Catamounts, 29 seconds to play. Sullivan with five wides. Oh, he drops the snap again, and Farman has it. This game is pretty much over. That pretty much sealed the deal. Another bad snap, another fumble. Furman has the ball, and with 24 seconds to play, they're just going to hit a knee, and what a tough way to end the ball game for the Catamounts. Oh, I tell you, those, those bad snaps have reared up their ugly head a couple of times. That yep. last drive down there when we had to settle for the field goal, and again, trying to get in to make a, have a respectable score here at the end of the ball game. Steve, you're right. And the Carolina Four Dealers postgame show coming up because now the Catamounts have no timeouts. Furman, all they have to do is hit an E and the victory formation, and we all know what's coming. This ball game is over, but uh, I'll tell you, it's been, uh, it's been a great ball game to watch as Furman is going to win it 32-20. to 20. Your final score here tonight on Senior Day in Cullowhee, the Carolina Ford Dealers postgame report is coming up, so keep it right here on the Catamount Sports Network. Thomas isn't a running back, but he plays like one. In his 2014 Ford F-150 with an available EcoBoost engine, Thomas deftly navigates through the sea of lumbering behemoths with the power and performance to leave the city and the gas pump behind. His weekend, the end zone, is within sight. Boost your yardage. Check out EcoBoost, also available in the 2014 Fusion and Escape at your Carolina Ford dealer. Go further. It's that time of year again, fall colors, cool evenings, and football. As the seasons change, one thing remains the same, make and bank. We've been here since 1922. We're here for you now and in the future. Stop by and see us or visit us at makeandbank.com and see all that we have to offer. Make and bank, the people you turn to, the bank you trust. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 463813. RICO USA is proud to sponsor the Western Carolina Catamounts. At RICO, imagination is what excites and inspires us. Services led, technology enabled, and people driven. RICO will show you how to leverage the powerful information and knowledge that exists throughout your organization and create the future you want. RICO, imagine change. Visit RICO-USA.com or call 800-63-RICO for a team of experts near you. I am Gorham Bradley, director of the Catamount Club. Through the support and generosity of alumni and friends of Western Carolina University, the Catamount Club reached and surpassed its goals during the past year. We need you to join us as we work together as a Catamount Nation to take WCU Athletics to the top of the Southern Conference. As a member of the Catamount Club, you are directly supporting our number one goal of providing scholarship assistance to our student athletes as they make each of us proud competing for the purple and gold. Join today by contacting the Catamount Club online at catamountsports.com. We invest in student athlete excellence. Now back to the Carolina Ford Dealers post game report on the Catamount Sports Network. Here's the Allison Outdoor Advertising Scoreboard Update. We are back in Cullowee. Jeff Bryson here at the scoreboard desk. The final score at Whitmire Stadium on this Saturday, Furman 32. And the Catamounts 20 will have complete postgame analysis coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, let's check the scoreboard. First around the Southern Conference, the Citadel winning today over VMI 31-10. It was Appalachian State 33, Wofford 21. Also, Georgia Southern winning on the